We're very excited this morning that we have two guests with us, Sorrel and Nicole, and they are with Compassion, and they're going to share a little bit of their story with us. But before they do that, I want to kind of give you some background to how we got involved in Compassion and what Compassion International actually is. When we started the church in 2008, we knew we wanted to live out Acts chapter 1, that we didn't want to just minister to the people in our area, our region, our our state, but we wanted to go into all the world and share the gospel, and we knew we couldn't be boots on the ground everywhere, so we searched for an organization that we could partner with, that we could help them do what they do around the world, and we knew that what we wanted to do is make sure we found an organization that was truly changing lives, and the second thing we wanted to do is make sure that our finances were being used wisely, and so we were able to connect with Kevin Myers in 2017. He was able to come sit with Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark was able to ask all the questions about compassion, learn the ins and outs of the organization, and he was able to be with us for our first Compassion Sunday. And through that, we sponsored over 200 kids that year through our church. And so it's just been incredible. Every year we've done a Compassion Sunday, we bring this to you. And we're just so honored that we are able to help them do what they do around the world. And here's a little bit about Compassion. It's a child development ministry dedicated to releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Through sponsorships, it's $38 a month to sponsor a child. And through donations, they empower local churches around the world to give um, holistic care to, to feed these kids, to nurture these kids, give them medical care, and help them grow into strong adults is what they do. And Compassion has addressed the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. Last year alone, 2.2 million kids. 2.2 million kids they were able to minister to through donations. Yes, through that $38 a month sponsorship. So in 2008, Pastor Mark and I were um, fortunate that we were able to go to Peru and we were able to go to multiple compassion centers on the ground and actually see with our own eyes what they were learning and how they were being fed and how the families were being taken care of. And it was absolutely incredible. So you give $38 a month for sponsorship, but you can give on top of that. You can give a birthday gift. You can send money for a Christmas gift, a family gift. And they brought out files and files on all all of these kids and every receipt for every dime that was ever given for those kids were in those files. The letters that they wrote to their sponsors, the sponsors writing letters back, all of that was in there. The records that they keep, the organization of it is absolutely incredible. So we believe 100% in compassion. We are dedicated to helping them do what they do. And like I said, as a whole, we, we sponsor over 200 through the families within our church. But first service today, 58 more kids got sponsored. So that was absolutely incredible. And Pastor Mark and I sponsor three kids. We have a little boy in Togo named Innocent. We have a boy in Tanzania, and we have a 14-year-old girl in Colombia. And we've been sponsoring Compassion Kids for over nine years, so we truly, truly believe in it. And we're very, very honored to have Nicole with us today because she grew up in Ecuador, and she was able to go to the Compassion Centers as a child, and her life was changed through that. So we're very excited. Can you make her feel welcome today? So, Nicole, growing up in Ecuador, what was that like for you? Ecuador is a very beautiful country. It's a very small but very beautiful country. We have the Andes Mountains. We have the beach part of the country and also the jungle. I grew up in the Andes Mountains, and I used to love going, uh, going to hike on the mountains and feeling the cold breeze on my face. It was uh, such a beautiful um, years that I remember growing up in my country. But also being a third world country, there is a lot of poverty in Ecuador, and poverty leads to crime. So I have been robbed twice. Uh, one, when I, I was a little teenager uh, by an older man, he had a knife in his hand, and he said, give me your cell phone, give me your cell phone. So I gave him my cell phone. Yes, it was very scary. And then later in my life, when I was a um, um, college student, I was robbed again by a group of um, young people. They also robbed my cell phone from me. So it's very sad uh, to see 
children and older people begging, begging for food and money in the streets. Um, it's a very sad situation, but that's why Compassion International make a big impact in my life and also in the life of my family. So what were the circumstances in your life as a child that led you to connect to a Compassion Center? So when I was nine years old, I felt that my whole life fell apart. I was at home with my mom and my little sister when a woman that we didn't know came to our home and showed my mom pictures of my father with another woman and their two little children. When we found out that my father was in another relationship with this woman, we were devastated. When my father found out that we knew his secret, he moved to Europe as an immigrant, leaving my mom alone with my sister and I, but also with a lot of debts. I remember living in a very old apartment filled with mice and holes in the roof. One day while I was washing the dishes by hand, I found a mouse in the water where I was washing the dishes. And when the rain came, we needed to move our things, even our beds, to not sleep in wet beds. It was a very hard time for us, not just financially, but also spiritually and emotionally. We felt just hopeless. So did somebody reach out to you and invite you to a compassion center? How did you connect with that? Yes, so one friend of my mom from my school, at that time I was six years old, she talked to my mom about Compassion International. And when my mom went, she signed my sister and I up to be sponsored children. And after some time, the pastor of the church where the Compassion Center was invited us to attend. And when we went, we met our Lord Jesus and we accepted him in our hearts. And since then, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, because since then, all my life was changed. The people from Compassion International helped us a lot. They gave all of us children food four days a week. They gave us shoes to go to school, books for our studies. They gave us Christmas gifts. They took care of us medically. They even gave me scholarship to go to college. And they gave my mom a job as well to be the secretary of the Compassion Center in my local church. Then my mom became the accountant, and then my mom became the director of the Compassion Center in my local church. God is so good. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And she's still there. Yes, ma'am. She still works there. Yes. That is absolutely incredible. So through Compassion Ship, we talked a little bit about it already. You have a sponsor in the States or somewhere in another country um, that sponsors the kids. How important was that relationship with your sponsors as a child growing up? And the letters that you received, how did that impact you? It was so important. I had the best Compassion sponsor. Her name is Kim Post. She's from Rochester, New York, and she is so awesome. She wrote me lots of letters telling me, I'm praying for you, I love you, I believe in you. She was the first one who taught me about when Jesus died in the cross, that he broke the veil, and now I have access to the Father. She was the first one to give me my Bible in English because she had a dream that one day she and I are going to be talking in English together and now we speak in English together. God is so good. And she even went to Ecuador to visit me four different times, including my wedding day. <laughs> She's so awesome. At the night when she cannot sleep, she wakes up to sew purses and in that way to have more money and sponsor more children around the world. She has like 13 kids around the world. She is so awesome. 30 kids? 13. 13 kids. Yeah. Still, that's that's a lot of kids. Um, that is absolutely incredible. So share um, a little bit about what you're doing in your life now with your husband and your one-year-old. Yes. So God has blessed me with my awesome husband, David Morrison. He's over here in the room. He is everything that I dream for, and all my prayers were accomplishing him. He loves the Lord. He loves people. He's passionate with God, and he wants to serve the Lord whenever and wherever. And the last year, God has blessed us with our first child, Jason Morrison, and he is just the sweetest little boy. And now my husband is the missions pastor in our church, and we are serving there in Johnson City, Tennessee, and also we're taking missions groups over to Ecuador to help our Ecuadorian friends. And so are y'all paying it forward with sponsoring kids as well? Yes, ma'am. So now we have the joy of giving back 
all the opportunities that I received when I was a child, sponsoring through Compassion International five beautiful children from Ghana and Uganda, Africa, from Ecuador, Guatemala, and the Dominican Republic. Being the sponsors of these children is a blessing for our lives. And it's so awesome that I am sponsoring someone from my own country, too. In 2020, before COVID, we went to Ghana, Africa, to visit our girl, Felicia. She's not a little girl anymore. She's 18 years old, and she's studying to be a sport doctor. She's so smart. She's brilliant. She's beautiful. She dreams big, and I cannot be more proud of her. We met her mom, her sister, her nephew. We cooked fried chicken together. It was such an amazing, amazing time that we had in Ghana. So when we were able to go to Peru, when, when you sponsor a child, you are able through compassion to travel to these countries and actually meet your child. And when we went in 2018, we had a girl on our trip, a young girl. She had just been married a few years. And prior to her getting married, she had started sponsoring this kid. And then she got married, and her husband told her, you know, that kid that you're getting letters from, that you're getting pictures from, it's probably not really coming from that kid. It's probably just some picture they're pulling out of the organization and just sending it to you. And she said, you know, I don't believe that. I really believe I'm sending it to him. And two weeks before we arrived in Peru, the kid found out that she was coming to meet him. He had just told his mom, he said, I don't believe that girl in America is really the one writing me these letters. I don't. And he wanted to qu quit. He wanted to quit going to the Compassion Center. He said, I just don't believe it. And I think we have a picture of them when they met. So that's Lindsay meeting her, her little boy on the right and the mom on the left. And he's still in the Compassion Center. But he said, I don't believe that that's really her. So it was really cool to see them meet. So it, the, the sponsorships, the letters, they are vitally important. And you can easily do it through an app. You can send letters back and forth, read your letters from your kids. So Kevin always told us that if you're not going to write them letters, please don't sponsor them because they are waiting on those letters. You shared last night about having a bad day and you came into your, your center that day and you had received a letter and it just completely encouraged you. So it is very, very important. So what would you say to somebody today who was considering sponsoring a child? So I will encourage you right now, if you can, for one moment, ask to the Spirit of, of God to hear what He is telling you. Is He telling you to sponsor a child? If He is, He will be the provider for you and your family. And He will be the one who gives you grace to do it. My life was changed completely because I met the Lord Jesus through Compassion International, because I had food in my table through Compassion International. My mom had a job through Compassion. And most importantly, my life alone was not changed, but now the life of my child has been changed forever. Now he will know the Lord and he will serve him. And that is the most important thing, the salvation for these kids. So... Please ask the Spirit of God what he's telling you and just be obedient because the rest is on him. Can we give it up for Nicole this morning? Thank you for sharing your story with us this morning. Thank you, Nicole. It has been such a pleasure getting to know you and your husband and that sweet baby Jason. I, He's a probably within a week or two age of my little girl. So I am not above arranged marriages because he <laughs> is just so sweet. <laughs> But we are very blessed at Canvas to be connected with Compassion. And in, to me, an even bigger blessing is that we actually have a staff member from Compassion International that attends Canvas and serves here with us. So this is Sorrel. Sorrel has been attending Canvas for a couple of years. And I met Sorrel when her and her family moved from Central Florida to, well, now they're almost in Lake City, but <laughs> um, they moved to this area, and she kind of just pranced into our lives like we've known her forever, and she's always been there, but um, they left their dream home in that area because God called them right here to our area, and so I'm going to let her share a little bit, but we are so thankful for her, but Sorrel, would you just kind of share with us this morning a little bit about your childhood? Did you grow up sponsoring children through an organization like Compassion? Growing up, I, I did not, and so I look around this room and I see the littles that are hearing about this at such an early age, um, and including my own son who's getting the opportunity to do so. And I just, I just 
I'm so excited about this next generation who's learning so very early about the importance of um, going beyond ourselves and going beyond our own walls. Yes, and since you didn't grow up in a home that sponsored, when was the moment that your heart just kind of sparked that opened up to this idea? That's a great question. So uh, it was after I had Grayson. He was about two years old, and I'd always known about compassion. And But it was in that moment um, that I'm looking at his cute little face with that bright red hair, and I, I'm like, I want him to know there's more than the the luxuries that we have here in America. I had already traveled um, several times to different poverty-stricken countries, and I wanted him to eventually uh, travel. But until then, what can we do right here in our own um, sphere? And so I was on Compassion's website scrolling, and I came across this cute little boy named Edward from Guatemala who was two years old, roughly the same age as Grayson. And it was in that moment he just captivated, and he became the first Compassion child within our family. Since then, we've added to our family, and we have Queen in Rwanda and Stephen in Nicaragua. And so their faces are on our refrigerator. And while we may not see them in person, uh, every morning when I get my creamer out for my coffee, um, I see them. I pray for them. I get to know them through the letters. And it's something that is just, you can't um, replace just that special connection that you get with these kids. We are from different countries our skin color is different, we speak different languages, but we're connected because of compassion, and we're connected because we are pouring into them the love of Jesus. That's awesome. Sorrel hasn't always worked within the Compassion International family, but I feel like your career uh, has always kind of taken you in that direction, but what led you to apply and move forward with the job with Compassion? Yeah, that's another good question. So, my journey, um, where, I, where it's led me to here now, started about 20 years ago. Um, I had graduated um, from UF, and I was climbing the corporate ladder, and I had the opportunity to travel to India. And in that moment is when I first saw true poverty. And I had the opportunity to experience God in a way that um, I had never done before. It was a, truly a time where Nicole mentioned, you know, I heard the whisper of God. I I was able to listen to him. I saw things that and experienced things that um, I had never done growing up. And it was in that moment that I heard him say, use your gifts and talents to build my kingdom. And at that moment, I didn't know what that meant at all. But I was obedient, and I just kept taking the next step, the next step, knocking on more doors, more doors, um, continuing to grow in where I am now. And so two years ago, the door opened as I knocked for compassion. And uh, my life has been forever changed as well. It is truly a remarkable organization that I not only we sponsor, so we're we're supporters and I get to work there. So it's a win-win. That's incredible. I know we sometimes say in in ministry that if you could just kind of pull the curtain away, you know, to be able to see what goes on Mm -hmm. behind the scenes and and see some of the things that we see that, you know, breaks our heart for what breaks God's heart. And that's that's kind of what I want to hear from you this morning is I know that compassion is the same way. I know when you're in an organization where you are hearing these stories on a daily basis, it just wrecks something on the inside of you. So what is it about compassion that you have seen that causes you to just have a deeper love for these children? No, that's wonderful. And I'm going to tell you, my why of being at Compassion is because of um, Nicole and, and, and children that grew up in poverty who are now doing something with their lives because of the opportunities they were given. If it wasn't for being a part of a Compassion Center, being sponsored, having that sponsor pour into them that they see you, they love you, God loves you, I'm praying for you, um, because of that, Nicole is sitting on this stool right here and, you know, married to a wonderful man who loves Jesus with the cutest little boy. And she's sharing her story, her testimony because of that. And so because of meeting um, alumni that we call them, like Nicole, um, I've had the opportunity to meet several throughout the past few years. And so I was at a table last, a couple weeks ago with Richmond. And Richmond <coughs> is from Uganda. And he was sharing his story. And it started with, he was from a, it was, and I would say an average family in Uganda. And his father was murdered in their home. And so he was a tenant farmer. And when that happened, his mom wasn't able to keep up the farming 
um, obligations. And so they had, they were kicked out of their home and they were on the streets in the slums of Uganda. <clears throat> and he shared that him and his siblings would just sit on the side of the street, just begging for someone to see them. And he used the word, just, is anyone see how hungry I am? Does someone see that I am starving as an eight year old? He, at some point he got so hungry, he said he found a magazine that was dirty and it had pictures of food on it. And he ripped it up and he's like, can I lie to my stomach that if I eat this, maybe my brain will think I'm full. And so that, to be in that place is something that we can't even begin to imagine. But, but God found this woman, the, his mom, his brave mom, just like your mom, who fought for you, was introduced to the church that had a compassion center. And then the siblings were able to go to the center and first get food. Because we can't share them, we can't share about Jesus. They're not going to hear, they're not going to learn without their bellies first being full. So it's always important that the children get fed. And then we can go into the next level of sharing Jesus. And now Richmond, I'm here to tell you, Richmond's now a pastor of the same church, Compassion Center, that he was first introduced to. So he's now full circle back, giving back, just like you, giving back. And so, you know, that's my why. That's why I, I, I am so blessed and humbled to be called at doing what I'm doing. I know last night when we were having dinner with Nicole and her family, her husband David shared that one of the first times that they got to go and visit one of their sponsor children, they had, like Tina talked about, this book basically of receipts. And he was flipping through the pages while he was waiting on everybody to get there. And he noticed that not once, not twice, but three times that child had contracted malaria. And he was just sharing with us something that really hit me last night as he said, there was no way possible without compassion that that child would have survived. So that's what that sponsorship is doing. And I just thought that was such an incredible story that goes so far beyond and, and continues to talk about what you guys are doing through Compassion. So thank you, Sorrel. Can we thank her for being with us today? Thank you, ladies, so much. We appreciate y'all. So we just want to wrap up a little bit today, um, our time together, and I want to read a scripture for us. And we're all familiar with John 3, 16. Whether you grew up in church or not, most likely you can quote that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But what most people don't know is 1 John 3, 16 through 18. So I want to read that to us today. It says, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we should also give up our lives for our brothers and our sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. And it's easy for us to be moved to tears. I can be moved to tears watching a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it's easy to be moved to tears. But what makes a difference is when we are moved to action. And in 1952, evangelist Everett Swanson traveled to Korea to preach the gospel to American soldiers that were over there. And what he saw while he was walking the streets one day forever changed his life and the lives of millions forever. He watched as city workers were scooping up what looked like piles of rags with a shovel and just dumping it in the back of a truck. So he's a little curious about what all it was, so we walked over there, and it wasn't piles of rags after all, but it was dead bodies of little orphans that had frozen in the streets overnight. On the airplane ride home, he heard that whisper that Sorrel talked about and Nicole talked about. He heard God saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about what you saw? And he could have easily said, I'm just one person. I'm just one man on the other side of the world. What could I possibly do? What could I actually give that would make 
a difference, but he knew he could not turn his back on these children, and he vowed to help them in any way he could. He raised money to support an orphanage in Korea and soon established a unique program linking Korean orphans with a caring individual whose generosity provided them with education, food, clothing, shelter, medical care, and then most importantly, they learned about Jesus. And that was the genesis of Compassion International.